Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 7th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Zenith Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A participant in our Slack channel did notice a large increase in the number of source IPs scanning the internet. And uh, well, uh, he actually noticed this based on some other systems that publish these numbers. So I looked at our data and yes, we had a substantial increase on January 2nd. We tracked about 270,000 IP addresses scanning the internet and that went up uh, to 500,000 on January 3rd and almost 600,000 on January 4th. So I took a closer look to see what's happening here and turns out that many of these sources pretty much explaining the entire increase here came from the 103 network. So 103 slash eight was the source of these scans almost certainly spoofed. They were pretty much focusing on port 22 and 23, but we didn't really see any connections in our Zage honeypots. So yes, there may have been a three-way handshake. Can't really tell that based on our data, but well, uh, if someone is scanning, then uh, why not also trying to log in? If it's something, for example, like Mirai and such. Also, some of the sources came from net blocks that were not actually assigned, which again confirms that these scans were most likely spoofed. Not really much you have to worry about here. Kind of also interesting that a doubling of the number of sources scanning the internet doesn't really make a difference or excites people too much these days. I don't have any great uh, explanation for why they used uh, 103 slash eight. The only thing I sort of could come up with was that this was the last net block that IANA assigned to APNIC. So the Asia Pacific Network Information Center, they received this net block uh, in February, 2011 and have since started to hand out IP addresses from that net block. There's still quite a bit of sort of unroutable or unassigned space inside that net block. So maybe they try to pick a net block that's not well used. And with recent events in Iraq and Iran, there's of course a lot of talk about possible repercussions in the cyber world. A couple of government agencies have issued respective alerts. At this point, we don't see any kind of attack that we could possibly sort of directly link to these events. One single website, government website was defaced as far as I can can tell and well these defacements by similar groups have been going on all along so this isn't really anything new or different in any way still helps to be vigilant but not really anything different you have to do at this point just do what you ever do keep your systems patched and watch out for any attacks and malware but well, if you are more paranoid, I have the tool just for you. It's called Buzzkill and it's described as a laptop kill cord. The idea here is to have a USB device that if disconnected will essentially start erasing your laptop. So you would have a script on your laptop watching for this USB device being disconnected. And once that happens, then some kind of kill script starts running on the laptop, destroying all data and rendering the laptop useless. Personally, I think that's total overkill and I would be way too afraid to actually accidentally trigger uh, this script. It's all too easy to have a thumb drive or something like this disconnect uh, by mistake. In this particular case, they even kind of assume that you're going to use some kind of magnetic connector in order to actually make it easier to disconnect uh, the thumb drive. The scripts uh, for this tool are written for Linux, pretty easy in Linux to trigger scripts whenever devices are connected or 
disconnected using UDEV rules, but could probably easily be adapted for other operating systems as well. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.